You've heard the adage, those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. But what about those who rewrite the past? Well, that's exactly what millions of Americans who tuned into Fox saw this week after House Speaker Kevin McCarthy released a trove of new January 6th security footage exclusively to Tucker Carlson. Now, McCarthy's controversial decision is reopening deep divisions within his own party about the Capitol attacks. And just last night, former Vice President Mike Pence had this to say at the annual Gridiron Dinner about his former boss and some of his fellow Republicans. He said President Trump was wrong. I had no right to overturn the election, and his reckless words endangered my family and everyone at the Capitol that day. And I know that history will hold Donald Trump accountable. Make no mistake about it. What happened that day was a disgrace, and it mocks decency to portray it in any other way. It's interesting that he decided to say this last night and draw this really sharp contrast with Donald Trump. It absolutely was, and it's uh, farther than he's gone before. He's talked about the security of his family before, but this was uh, really uh, calling out the former president. But what he's not done is sort of accepted the invitation to come and testify at any of the hearings uh, on January 6th. In fact, he's resisting that. So uh, some may say perhaps a bit convenient for him to make this in a closed uh, press setting, basically without cameras there. But the fact that he did say it, I think, is quite significant, regardless of the venue and the forum. Uh, the question for the former vice president politically as he goes forward uh, and tries to uh, potentially run for president, there's really no appetite for that. But uh, this is one of the strongest breaks we've seen him uh, make from Donald Trump. Uh, does it matter in the long run? I'm not necessarily sure who is listening to Mike Pence yeah. at this point. Why do you think right now he chose this moment to do this? I mean, certainly Pence is one of, as we've talked about, a number of Republicans who are looking to potentially run for president. He's been out. He's been uh, in early states. So, But the base doesn't view it the, the, you know, the well, way that Mike Pence does. That's the problem for him, though, right, is he's trying, I think all of these Republicans who are not Trump have to try and find a lane, try and find a space and an audience. And does this connect? Are there Republicans in the party who are interested in hearing this? Does this message connect with people? And I think that's still really an open question. Yeah. You know, it's been interesting to see this Republican debate play out about January 6th. Kevin McCarthy did not want to have this discussion. He did not want to have to talk about January 6th. He avoided discussion about this for much of the past two years, but then he gave the security footage to Tucker Carlson, this internal security footage, and he's been back and forth about defending his decision to go this route. Just listen to how he, kept the Speaker of the House, then the Republican minority leader, talked about it on January 6th, and now what he's saying. The violence, Destruction and chaos we saw earlier was unacceptable, undemocratic, and un-American. We all should stand united in condemning the mob together. Look, each person can come up with their own conclusion, but I, what I just want to make sure is I had transparency. I mean, I asked McCarthy repeatedly uh, this week, does he agree with the portrayal the, by Tucker Carlson that this was a a, 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 a mostly peaceful day. He could not get himself to disagree publicly with Tucker Carlson. What's your read of the situation? <laughs> you know, he's always had a problem with this. I mean, look, the, the night of January 6th, he voted against certifying Joe Biden's Electoral College victory. I mean, he, you know, he had 140 Republicans. So, and then three weeks later, he's down with Trump in Florida. After January 6th, he's down. Trump had left the White House, and McCarthy was the first person to go see him. Down, or second after Lindsey Graham, you know, I mean, he needs Trump. He needed Trump to be speaker. He still needs Trump or that element of the party. But he, but this is a huge problem. There is no alternative, you know, uh, reading on January 6th. It was an insurrection. It was an attempt to overthrow the government. Um, but now you have, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and a full committee chairman, Co uh, Chairman Comer, the oversight committee, they're going to go see the January 6th political prisoners. I mean, this is... Lunacy. This is not. This is not the you know what the country needs. And McCarthy knows it's a problem for him, um, but he just can't get himself to get there because he still he can't cut off Trump. He can't cut off the Trump wing of the party, the MAGA wing. He can't cut it off. And just listen to how the Republican senators who, who I talked to about all this, how they reacted about the efforts to try to whitewash the events of that day. I think it's bull. I was here. I was down there. I don't take any part in whitewashing January 6th. It wasn't a stroll through the Capitol. Uh, it was an attack on our Capitol. There's no question but that January 6th was a riot, a, an insurrection attempt. Efforts to try and pretend that it was something other than that are despicable and, and frankly dangerous.
what do you think of this divide within the party over this issue? They were all there, and now others are you know, downplaying it. They witnessed it. But these senators obviously have still, it's very fresh in their minds. Right, right. And it's another example of this deep divide among Republicans, especially when it comes to the House and the Senate. And I do think what you're seeing here, too, with McCarthy giving Tucker Carlson the tapes, what Marjorie Taylor Greene is doing by visiting these January 6th defendants at the Capitol, is an attempt to just rewrite the history of January 6th, which in a, in a very false way. I mean, we were all there. We witnessed it. If, if we weren't physically there, we witnessed it live on TV. I do think some element is that uh, Republicans felt, or Republicans were shut out of the January 6th committee process by their own decision. They, I think, re recognize that that was a strategic error on their part. And I do think some of this is trying to catch up and trying to rewrite the narrative, again, in an inaccurate way because of all that came out through those committee hearings. But what was remarkable this week, too, was M Mitch McConnell, speaking of Republican senators, going out there without being prompted by questions from one of you guys, yeah. going out there and saying, I disagree with the interpretations that Tucker Carlson put forward on Fox News the previous night. I mean, we all know Mitch McConnell. He does not proactively, um, uh, you know, distance himself from either Fox News, the Republican base, or Kevin McCarthy like that. So this was a really big deal and, for him. And aligning himself with the Capitol mm -hmm. Police Chief. Right. He found it right. offensive. He found it cherry-picked. The footage that was aired on, on uh, Fox. And it, I asked McCarthy, did the speaker make a mistake? He wouldn't say if the speaker made a mistake. Right. But he said Fox News made a mistake, which is still significant for someone who really carefully uh, guards his words. But just as Mike Pence comes out strongly against what uh, Donald Trump calling up on him to overturn the election. We heard the strongest comments that he's made to date about this last night. Donald Trump is on the other side, as he has been uh, for so long. It's, uh, even having this really uh, curious song that he recorded uh, with the January 6 prisoners about, uh, just take a listen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I mean, he's aligning himself with the people who are in jail for trying to overturn a certified presidential And election. this is exactly what worries so many Republicans I've been speaking to, actual voters. They want to turn the page and move on, talk about the economy, talk about President Biden, talk about other things, and here it is, once again, talking about the former president. Back to Tucker Carlson for one quick second. The bottom line, what we know now, you know, through the deposition and other things, he is worried about his audience, uh, you know, losing his audience. So that, of course, is why he's concocting this new show and other things, but uh, it's a huge divide within the party that's dangerous. Yeah, really, and it's, and it's gonna continue to play out.